thank you. So welcome to this, uh, to this talk uh, on uh, 3D web services on, on models. Actually, uh, we have been working on uh, 3D web diffusion uh, for a couple of years, and um, there, was a lot of, there are a lot of things uh, available, and there is a lot of things moving on in this field, and I wanted to take the opportuni opportunity of this talk uh, to, to give a, a, a panorama view of what is existing. Um, so I will, stand, I, will, I will start with a couple of examples. So actually, uh, 3D data, 3D visualization on the web, uh, it's not only uh, something we can think at uh, in a dream. It's already there. Uh, big players do it. For example, uh, we, here we have the here maps uh, or the Nokia map. This is based on WebGL rendering and is, uh, is online. You can, you can use it. Uh, there is also the Google Maps uh, web, new web, web map that uh, uses WebGL 3D rendering. And, and as we can see in this example, uh, it's not just uh, 2D, and, 2D and a half, it's real 3D, as you can, un, you can see through under the bridge. Huh? So we have real 3D data displayed on, on, the, on, on the map. So for the big players, and there is also uh, open source solution, and I will uh, show one. I, I choose to, to show Open Web Globe because Martin is one of the core developer of Open Web Globe, and also because if you look at the rendering of this of this image, uh, it's based. It's like a, it's uh, it's a aerial imagery, WMTS request plus a, a G JSON tiles that is the digital elevation model, and the rendering is ba is done in the browser. And if you look at the quality of the image, it's, it's, you couldn't di distinguish if you were in the, in the opposite mountain and took yourself the picture. The quality is really, really great. So just let's, let's take a, a couple of minutes to have a look at the, the rendering of a WebGL globe, 3D. So here we have the globe. And when, uh, when you scroll in, so you have a, you have tiles that come. We ha you have tiles with the digital elevation model, <coughs> and if you go to some uh, some nice place in the Swiss Alps, for for example, you have real 3D data displayed, and you can. So. To this 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 shows that not only big players can implement such solution, but also the open source community has has the. The capacity, the, the knowledge, and uh, uh, the ability to develop uh, great rendering 3D globes. Uh, not only Terra and uh, Imager, 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 uh, Imager area can be displayed, but also, for example, textured, textured buildings like in the, in, in the EPFL. Just the time to load the data. So you have here uh, 3D buildings that are actually KML, KML buildings and displayed <coughs> on top of the, this uh, WebGL globe. So let's go back to, to the talk. Um, so actually, uh, there are a lot of standards, ongoing efforts uh, outside uh, in this uh, Geo 3D web. But actually, what do we want? The, that's uh, one, one question that actually we want. So we want to be able at least to display 3D scenes, so aerial imagery for sure, uh, textured on digital ele elevation models. We want buildings wi with the texture. We want uh, labels. We want markers to query. We want interaction with the map, uh, like navigation, selection, uh, pop-ups, measure, and so on. And uh, one, one thing, um, we want also a large perimeter, let's say a worldwide perimeter. Alors, not maybe uh, it, 3D in worldwide uh, doesn't make that sense, but we want to be able to be local in a 3D context and navigate to another local place in a 3D context without, without losing the link. So we, we need to be able to go back, to be on a globe, to go to another 
to another place. So there is a, a continuum uh, in the navigation. So for sure in 2013, we want a, a web solution that runs without any plugin, should be cross-platform and, and of course also cross-devices. And uh, as we stand all for open source, should be of open standards, open format and open source code. So what's available? There is one thing I would say now that is for sure, there is a standard, this is WebGL, that's the way to display on the web 3D graphics. So WebGL, uh, this is for Web Graphics Library, and it's a JavaScript API that allows to render graphics uh, using the power of the graphic, uh, the graphic processing unit. We don't, we don't use the, the processor, the CPU, to, to, to process the, ima the, the, the image. We use the GPU, and it's, it's dedicated for this task, so it's very efficient, and the result is you can navigate very um, very smoothly on a web on a web application through uh, WebGL. So when you 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 write a, a WebGL program, so you write some JavaScript code for the interaction, but also some shader code that actually uh, uh, um, assign orders to the graphic card. And WebGL, um, uh, we said we want a solution that is that runs without any plugin, and uh, WebGL is implemented in every, uh, every browser and even in the IE Internet Explorer Elf version. We've done some tests with OpenWebGlob and OpenWebGlob is rendered well in IE11. That means we are really on the good way, on the good, uh, the great to have a broad usage of WebGL. And also it's mobile, ready devi uh, mobile device ready. There are still some uh, performance issues due to the, the the hardware, but in, with this trend, uh, it's going to be fine also. So WebGL, this is for sure what we need f for the rendering, but also we need standards in, in order to have interoperable, interoperable solutions. And so as we come from the geo world, we look at the OGC, and here there are already some standards for this. Uh, um, or at least there are efforts on going in this direction, so there is the 3D portrait service uh, standard, which has two proposals that are ongoing now. The web view service, kind of WMS-like, and the W3DS service, like kind of WFS-like. The W3DS service was used, for example, by the Brandenburg project uh, till sh show you earlier. So you can ask, you can, uh, request this, the data through an OGC standard, that's okay. There is, for example, a KML standard that allows to display 3D buildings. We've seen this at the EPFL, but maybe it's not okay to display for the whole world as KML buildings. There are other standards like City GML, but that's not for the web. It's the standard to, to, for, for, for storing the data, but it's not dedicated to transfer this data to the web. So, Actually, the, the OGC uh, defined the web service, the way to query 3D data, but there are other, other guys around the world from other, uh, from other um, uh, fields that work also towards 3D. So for example, there are guys from the web, like a uh, web 3D group uh, that, that have de defined uh, a data format to, to send data, 3D data to, the, to a web browser and that's, for example, X3D data, data format. That's interesting because uh, this could already be, this could already be, already be, be used uh, uh, in, in the Brandenburg project with a GeoServer. And there are other, other guys from the graphic world that have issued the WebGL standard and that, that have also uh, issued Colada also a standard to store data, but not to transfer it. And they, they are working now on the GLTF uh, uh, transfer format that should, that should allow actually to transfer very efficiently uh, data to WebGL, to OpenGL, to OpenGL on mobiles. So there are a lot of efforts on go going on on this, and we will dig into uh, some of the highlighted uh, standards. So I, I give you, Martin, the microphone. Thanks,